Hello there. Welcome back to the ANA podcast where we talk about Jesus, apologetics, theology, and more. I'm Ashley and I'm so excited to be back with you today. Um, I'm in a different location. It's my living room because I am in fact baking bread right now and I fear that if I'm in my room, um, I won't hear the bread go off. So anyway, I apologize for this ghetto setup. I ordered a tripod that'll hopefully be here soon, but until then I literally have my phone propped up on a box on top of my computer where I'm recording my sound. It's a mess. I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to be a tech girl, but here I am. I'm trying my best. Anyway, that's not what this video is about today. Today, um, I'm going to start another new series on um, kind of some Christian cliches that aren't actually Christian, but they are cliche. So I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, The first saying that we're going to tackle today, well, hold on, I should say, Um, the sayings that I'm going to be tackling are things that Christians or maybe people often say, but aren't quite biblical. So the first one today is going to be, God won't give you more than you can handle. Now, um, I have some background with this saying, um, in college, that makes me sound so old, like, I just graduated college just last year, um, but it makes you sound so old <laughs> in college. Anyway, um, in college, I was meeting with a mentor when I was in Bible school, and I remember telling her, well, I know that God won't give me more than I can handle, and she stopped me right there and was like, Ashley, that's not true, and honestly, in the moment, I was a little bit like, okay, girl, like, what are you even talking about? Um, I'm a little bit hashtag offended. Uh, but she went on to explain that God does indeed give you more than you can handle, and that's um, why we need him. <laughs> we need him because we can't handle many things by ourselves. Um, and so this is um, sometimes, I think, I think where this is taken from is a verse where it's basically like God won't tempt you beyond what you can bear. But what he's talking about, or what the... It's in 1 Corinthians. What Paul is talking about there is not hardships. He's talking about sin. And God's not going to give you a temptation that he knows that is impossible to resist, if that makes sense. Um, So it's not talking about God allowing for bad things to happen, um, things beyond your capacity to deal with on your own. He's talking specifically about sin. So... um, When we think about this, there's three stories in the Bible that really stick out to me, and I want to talk about them. The first one is our boy Job, and Job is, um, basically the story of Job goes, um, Satan came to God and was like, hey God, um, I want to tempt Job, and I think that he's going to fall away from you, kind of like that, and God was like, okay, Job is like the most righteous man on earth. Um, You're allowed to tempt him. You can take everything away except his life. You can't take his life away. And so Satan's like, bet. And so he goes down and basically takes everything away. All of Job's children die. His livestock die. I'm pretty sure all of his servants die. I could be wrong about that one. And his friends are trying to be helpful, but they're not really helpful. And they're like, Job, just give up on the Lord. Like, this sucks completely. And Job gets to a point where he's like, why have I even been born? Like, loathe the day that I have been born. I wish my birth would have just ended in my death because I'm going through so much pain and I can't bear it. But God comes back and he uh, basically show like, it's almost like a, um, what's that movie? A Christmas Carol where there's like the ghosts and they like take Ebenezer throughout his life and show him at like a 10,000 foot view. Um, It's kind of like the same thing. God takes him through all these things and is like, do you not understand that I'm the one who gave you breath and life? I'm the one who gives and can take away too. And who are you to, um, to doubt me in this moment? And basically, uh, God, because of, in the end, Job is faithful. Somebody started vacuuming. I'm so sorry. In the end, Job is faithful and God ends up rewarding him with Uh, much more than he had even before. He gives him more children, uh, more land, and uh, different things like that. Now, not that that negates the pain that Job went through. That's just to say that God redeemed the situation. Um, And so if you look at that situation, it's clear that Job was given more than he could handle by himself. He was not capable of handling all that death and sadness and sickness by himself. God is the one that sustained him through that. And God gave him more than he could handle, but he needed to rely on the Lord in those moments. 
Second one that I think of is Moses um, in Exodus 3 when he is, I just scared my dog, sorry. (laughs) In Exodus 3 when he comes to the burning bush and basically the God of the entire universe is like, Moses, Moses, come over here. Um, And sorry, I'm flipping through my Bible. This is where God is calling Moses to set the people of Israel free from slavery. He's calling Moses to lead the people out of Israel. And Moses is like, um, I'm so sorry, Lord. Like, I'm literally so sorry for saying this, but I have a speech impediment. And how am I supposed to be the one that's leading these people out of Israel if I can't even speak correctly? And God is like, it's not you that's doing this. It's I'm working through you. I'm with you. I will be with you through this whole experience. I'm giving you more than you can handle is basically what he's saying, but I'll be with you. He ends up giving him Aaron um, to serve as like his spokesperson, which is pretty cool. And so again, Moses was not up to task, if that makes sense. He was not capable in and of his own strength to lead an entire nation of people out of slavery, but he had God on his side. Third one is, I think about Paul. The end of 2 Corinthians 11, Paul is going through all these lists of things that he's endured. He's endured lashings and beatings. He's been rejected by his people. He's been shipwrecked. Um, Basically, all these horrible things are happening to him. And verse 30 says this, If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. Paul is admitting that he's a weak man, that without Christ, he would not be able to endure these things. Um, And we know that Paul is maybe the most influential Christian to ever live. Now, the cool thing about Paul is that he was a Jew. And in that same chapter, it talks about all the right things that he did. He lived according to the law. Um, He did everything right. If anyone should boast, it should be him. But yet he says, I'm not worthy of boasting. I should boast in my weakness because that is where Christ shines through. It's in our weakness that Christ shines through. Um, I don't know if you've ever come across a person who is going through like a super hard time. Um, I think of this pastor that I've seen online and right now they're dealing with, um, they found out that their daughter who's in the womb has a condition that is incompatible with life. Like she'll probably pass away soon after, after birth. Um, and obviously they're lamenting, they're weeping. It's more than they can bear, but they're pointing to Christ and saying that they know that with Christ, they, they're able to Uh, withstand this trial. It's not through them. It's through Christ within them. Christ is the one um, who's able to take these things. The whole Christian deal is that we can't, but God can. We are sin-sick people who are in need of a Savior, and the whole thing with Jesus is that he doesn't need us to be strong because he is strong, and he promises to work through us in that. So if anyone ever tells you Um, God won't give you more than you can handle. You don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to be like, "Ah, that is such a lie. But calmly maybe correct them and say, well, yes, he will give me more than I can handle. But with Christ, I know that he can handle it. So anyway, that's just a little spiel about um, that saying. I hope to do some more of these in the future. If there's any Christian cliches or cliche phrases that you have an interest in me covering, please pop them in the comments below. Um, Otherwise, like, comment, and subscribe. I think that's what the the YouTubers say. Um, And follow follow us on Instagram. Sometimes we post some content, sometimes we don't. Um, I'm trying to get better at it. Anyway, I will talk to you next week. See you later.